I didn't think I'd be doing a video so soon about this rifle again. And the amount of rust on this thing is just unbelievable. Um, it's just a rust magnet. So I've got to get it parkerized, which is what phosphating is, I believe. Just blacking, parkerizing. Um, I don't want to get it blued, you know, because, uh, yeah. With the amount of um, pitting that's on this, uh, a really reflective surface like bluing is going to show up so much of the imperfections. Like the action itself, the barrel itself is not too bad, but the action itself is really pitted on the outside. Uh, man, the rust! The amount of rust! Is, uh, unbelievable! Oh, God. I've got, to, I've got to get it phosphate. I've got to get it some treatment done to it because it's just a rust magnet. Anyway, I'm having a beer, I'm having a Bex. There you go. I, um, I just made the lawn, just only the front one because to do both in this, in this heat, humidity would just kill me. It wouldn't, but I'm just lazy. Um, and plus, I want to do some other stuff like this. Um, yeah, so it's really hot, humid, and I'm mowing every <laughs> every three days. Yeah, it's unbelievable how the grass grows here after a bit of rain and then the sun. But anyway, this is what I'm talking about, the Martini Enfield. And I was saying that I had I'd ordered a new stock for it. Well, guess what? It's turned up today. So, I'm not going to show you that. It, it, I got it from the Martini Henry Society. And they are, thank you for shopping with us. Martini Henry Society, 89 Clumber Drive. Clumber, I like that. C-L-U-M-B-E-R Drive, Radcliffe on Trent, Nottingham, NG12 1DA United Kingdom. And if you want to contact them, <coughs> they are at info at martinihenry.org or you can just go straight to their shop and it's martini-henry-society.myshopify.com or just google Martini Henry Society and it'll come up and you can navigate your way to the shop and buy stuff. So what did I get? I got a, uh, it doesn't say the prices here, I don't know why, um, I think it was about 50 bucks Australian. A Bandelier 3A3 replica brown leather. Martini Henry Mark 1 to 3 replica woodstock only. Stock cup nickel plated replica comes with original spring. Stock cup retaining pin original blued. Okay, so let's have a look at the bits. Oh man, I'm sweating like it. Yeah. Uh, so the bandolier, it is a 303 bandolier. Um, yeah, what can you say about that? A 303 bandolier, reproduction, of course. Um, this, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you've got, yeah, you've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 50 rounds, was it 50 rounds? No, 50, 50 round bandolier. So with 50 rounds of 303, yeah, you could do a fair bit of damage. Um, it does have, I'm not really sure what, there's, a, there's like a buckle here. I have no idea what that's for. Uh, the buckle is brass, it's cast. So like, Cast brass or cast bronze. I'd say it's cast brass. Um, the stitching is it's hand stitching. Okay. I shit you not, it is hand stitching. Yeah, it's all hand stitched. So what that and it's got no um it's got no maker's marks on here. Any reference to where it's made. 
My assumption is that it is either made in India or Pakistan because a lot, a lot of leather goods are made in Pakistan, mostly Pakistan, some in India. Um, so the actual, uh, the actual, the way this is, works is it's actually a, yeah, it's a Chicago screw setup. So it's a pin, a brass pin, that goes onto a, on, onto a flathead tip screw at the bottom. So the flathead tip screw at the bottom and, the, and a brass pin on top. So I'm going to have to lock tight them because they're all, no, that one's loose, that one's loose. Every one of them is loose. Yep, loose. Yep, loose. Just from transport, I would say. They'd come loose. Yep, loose. Yep, loose. <laughs> They're all loose. Um, but, so it's all hand stitched. So, uh, except for, no, it's not all hand stitched. Some of it is machine. Oh, is, that, is it? Is that machine stitched? Sort of hard, no. No, that looks hand stitched. It looks like the whole thing is hand stitched. So there's a fair bit of work gone into it and it's a pretty sturdy looking thing. Um, yes, definitely, if you're thinking, if you if you go to the um, Martini Henry Society and have a look at this bandolier, get it. I, I think, yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, let's see, what else did I get? Man, I'm sweating. Ugh. It is so humid, and like I said, I just did mow the lawn. Oh, that's a workout. It's so damn humid. I haven't got the fan on because it's noisy, uh, and because I care about my uh, viewers. So here's the butt stock. Um, the actual picture of it, when you when you have a look at it, the actual picture of it, it, it looks quite light. The wood looks quite light, but um, in actual fact, it's quite dark. Um, it's, it's not stained. It is a dark wood. It's a really dark wood. Uh, not exact. and looks like there's been a fair bit of... Okay, so I, I'm, I'm assuming yeah, there's been a bit of handwork done to it. It hasn't all just been pantographed. Um, I, yeah, that's been hand cut. And now the, the socket hole, yeah. So there's, someone's actually gone with a file. They haven't done a crash up job of it. Someone's actually worked with a file around there, like that's not straight. Yeah, that's not, yeah. So is it fair? Again, probably made in India, I'm assuming. Certainly not done in the UK. And it hasn't been done with a pantograph. Uh, probably the main shaping of it is, is, let's have a look at it. Let's have a look to see if it's, if you look down there and you can see all, it's been hand done and it's been hand done. Okay, so someone's done the whole thing, looks like the whole thing by hand. So it'd have to be some third world country. For it costs 95 pounds, which if you translate that in Australian dollars, you're looking at about 130 Australian dollars. Uh, this thing, right. So what I've got here is uh, the um, socket. This is the socket. It's a nickel. It's a nickel socket, so it's not going to rust. But the spring is an original spring. Like it's still got the shit on it. <laughs> Rusty wood and particles and shit on it. I'm going to have to. Um, I'm going to have to clean that spring up. Now I also did buy a retaining pin, which it says that it's blued. Uh, I think a better description of it would be uh, 
Let's have a look. Yeah, better description would be rusted, not blued. It's just totally covered in rust. It looks like an original. It's it's not a it's not a repro. <clears throat> so they make a repro socket. Cause they my understanding is they're originally brass, not nickel. And uh, then they've got uh, uh, where they've sourced an original, and that that is an original spring. That's not a repro. An original spring this is sort of a circular spring, and uh, and an original pin. Now, why wouldn't you just? Yeah. All right. The issue. Let's have a look. Tell you what the issue is. My assumption is that the people, pardon me, they've gotten to make this stock are not the same people they've gotten to make this socket because. So if we take, I'm not doing close-ups of what I'm doing here because I hey, look, you know. So I want to remove this spring. Uh, ooh, I'm stuck my nail up. Uh, to remove the spring, I need a tool. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'm back. Uh, <clears throat> I'll put the pin in there. Uh, where do I put those tools? There they are. Uh, I need some magnification. So, let's get this spring out. Yeah, I mean, that, they haven't even, it's an original spring, they haven't even bothered to clean it up. It's just caked in rust and old shit and whatnot. Um, the actual socket itself, it's cast, and the joining mark, yeah, they haven't cleaned it up too well. I tried to clean it up a bit. Yeah. It's not very expensive, but... The issue that I have is that it doesn't fit. Okay, it's supposed to be flush. It is supposed to be flush. And so the diameter of the actual cup itself, of the socket, The diameter of the socket is, let's go, let's go 20th century millimeters. Sorry, 21 21.24, 21.27, 21.35, 21.24, 21.4, 21.4, 21.4, yeah, between 21. Point Two and twenty-one point four, and what's the diameter of this hole? Twenty. Okay, so you've gotten a twenty mil. Yeah, twenty. Oh, just over twenty. All right. So there's a difference. Um, one of the other issues that I have, one of the issues that I have with this stock is that. Um, so they'll drill the hole for the socket, but they haven't drilled the hole for the pin that goes the, the cross pin that's supposed to hold it in. Now, why wouldn't you do that? I know because uh, they were just winging it. Um, so, but if They've drilled it too deep, also, because let's, that's what it looks like. Um, let's go from there to there, 10 mil. Let's go to there, 11.26. So they've actually drilled it too deep. Uh, what is, what is, okay, let's see the thickness. 
Fewan. Gone like two mil, two deep all around. What about that secondary? Oh, no way of measuring that. Um, yeah. So this reproduction socket, um, which has been cast and then hand ground, uh, is not perfect. I'm going to have to do a bit of customising to that hole. <clears throat> Can I do customising to the hole or customising to this socket? Because this socket is not... Well, it probably originally was round. I don't know if it's supposed to be round. But now it is... not. Right there it's 21.15, 21.2. 21 and it's 21 21.3, 21.3, 21.2, 21.35, 21.2, 21.3. Yeah, they've um, they've taken it out around and they ground it. Probably some yeah, in some sweatshop in India or somewhere. I don't know. Sorry. Um. So what I'm going to do now is actually see if this stock even fits in to the action. So, start off by unscrewing. Yep, yep. Okay, so there's the action. Action Jackson. Get the screw out. Now, they haven't screwed, they haven't um, drilled the hole for the sling swivel, which is unfortunate. This, this bolt is sort of tapered in the middle there, and it's, I thought, has it just been rusted off and worn like that? No, it's, that's how it's designed. Why, I'm um, not really, maybe someone can educate me on that. Pardon me, beer. Life-giving necessity. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here we go. Well, go through the hole. Now. Okay. So it would appear that. Not a perfect fit, and let's see if the angle of the stock is correct. That's where the angle would be. It's not too bad. Is the stock the same size? It's actually a little bit. Mm, it's a little bit shorter, so, but um, I don't know if you can see or not, there's a, there's definitely a seam showing, so, it's not a perfect fit, it does say in the description you might have to do some, some uh, customising to get it to fit. Uh, how does the butt plate fit? It's, this is the real test. The reason why I'm doing this is, is just to let you guys know if, if you are buying stuff from the Martini Henry Society that, yeah, <coughs> um, it came quite promptly. It, it took 13 days from the moment from the day that I ordered it to the day that it's delivered now is 13 days um, because I ordered it on the 14th and today's the 27th 
So 13 days, it's arrived here at my door and I'm in a, a, a region, a regional area. So if I was in a major city, it probably would have taken a lot less than that. Probably would have taken 10 days, maybe a week, probably 10 days. But just to let you know, so this, the other thing is this socket, I'm gonna have to, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to, I know what I'm gonna have to do. Because the, the socket is too shallow, the hole is too deep. What I'm going to do is use that Permatex putty and uh, just sink it in and just leave it there permanently. Once I've tried it actually in there and made sure that it does line up with the lever. Uh, well, actually, let's see, does. That looks like it's perfect. Okay. So I'm not going to do too much buggerizing around there. Yeah. Okay. So I've just got to just got to take a little bit off the end, so that it fits right up against the steel, because it doesn't at the moment, as I say. So I've just got to take a little bit off the end, and then that will actually just move everything forward. Um, is that at the moment? That's solid. Yeah, it's not moving anywhere. All right, or I might not do anything to it. Uh, I'll have to get back to you once I've mucked around with it. But if you are thinking of ordering from the Martini Henry Society, yeah, do it. Well, they're, they're, who else can you order it from? Who else can you get a brand new butt stock from? Um, here in Australia, you got no hope. Uh, Martini Henry Society is it. Uh, I had a look like I, I've gotten fucking wasps. I've gotten um, butt stocks from Macon butt stocks before. Macon rifle stocks or Macon, Macon gun stocks in Macon, Georgia. In, I think it's, they're in Macon, Georgia, in the United States. Um, yeah, their stuff's good, but I couldn't get martini stuff. Yeah, so the the wood is very dark. It's probably a little bit too dark. It doesn't really match compared to the old wood, which did match. Um, so there's a fair bit of difference between how dark this is and how dark this was. This looks like walnut. This is not walnut. This is probably some exotic Indian hardwood. Yeah, it's still good, um, but yeah. So that's what you're gonna get um, yeah, so it, the original, when you get a pin, the retainer pin for the socket, it's an original, it's still covered in rust, <laughs> blued, but no, it's just covered in rust, oops, I dropped it, and um, the, the screw, I mean, uh, the spring, and it does say original spring, that comes with the socket, it's an original spring, it's still covered in crap, uh, and when, you know, when they removed it out of an old Martini Henry, yeah, they just removed it straight out of it and just chucked it in the parts bin and said, there you go, we can sell them. So that socket, um, now, currently, if I put that in, that socket, I don't think that would line up. I'd have to put it like that. Yeah, that's, that's odd. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to have a muck around with it. Um, yeah. So anyway, if you are thinking about, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going on with it after I've fixed it and then I'll do the rest of the video. Anyway, until then, uh, till the rest of the video, see you in a sec. Yeah, I'm back, it's the next day. Um, I've done pretty much what I needed to do. Uh, I've got these gloves on because whenever I touch the thing, it's, it, wherever I touch it, it rusts. Um, doesn't do it everywhere, just where there isn't a patina. If, if there's no patina there, then it rusts. Um, now the the end cap, um, I didn't really do anything to it, I just replaced the screw. It is a pretty crap looking setup. But um, I would have to, to to get it to fit properly. It's the right thread. Oh, to get it to fit, it's a brass, old brass screw, which yeah, 
pretty hard to find the bolt. Um, I would have to turn it on the lathe, which, yeah, maybe, maybe one day when I buy a mini lathe, I'll do it, but uh, I'll find another screw that's appropriate. Uh, what else did I do? Uh, all right, so I put the I put the the socket in. It's nickel coated brass. Um, it's not perfect, but certainly better than nothing. Uh, and I drilled a hole for the for the sling swivel. Put that in there. Um, what else did I do? Yeah, the, the the actual angle of that that top hole for the butt plate isn't right, so the screw's sort of hanging out at the bottom there, but yeah, what do you do? But it's a perfect size. The end of the butt is the perfect size of this of this new butt. Um, so I I have not I've just tightened the, the bolt. I have not um, done any fiddling around with it. Uh, mate, when I when I get this coated, I've got I've got to get it coated. It just rusts too much. Um, now, how am I going to get it coated? Uh, I was actually I might give um, Craig from CS Cerakoting a call and uh, ask him if he does flat black cerakoting that would be the preferred option to get it cerakoted um, you know man they've rust on this thing uh, yeah a more authentic method would be to have it blued but or phosphated but man even, even uh, blued and phosphated guns rust and up here where I am it's a certainty. It's not a possibility. It's a certainty. So I'll see how I go. Um, I'll give him a call. See what he says. Uh, I know there's probably a lot of people saying, "Oh, you shouldn't do anything to it. You should leave it original." Well, it's already not original. You know, I've already changed the butt. Um, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a collector. You know, I'm not a collector. <clears throat> I want an old gun that shoots, and this old gun shoots. So I'm going to shoot it, you know. It's not going to sit in my cabinet, you know. There's some sort of centerpiece saying, oh, well, look at that. I've got a gun made in 1880. Um, so that's not going to happen. Um, I'm going to be shooting it and hopefully when I can go out hunting with it. Yeah, that's going to be sweet. Hunting with, an, with a 141-year-old rifle. You know, as far as as far as using old guns is concerned, um, this is about as far back as I want to go. I'm not interested in uh, muzzle loaders. Like really, that's just a pain in the ass. Uh, cartridge firearms are the way to go, and this I don't really want to get a. F well, I'd like to have one, but. It's so ridiculously expensive to shoot a 45577 original Martini Henry because here in Australia the cases from Bertram Brass are $7.50 Australian each. They sell them by the case, single case, and they're $7.50 Australian each. My God, you can form them, I think, from what is it, 20 gauge shotgun brass or. I know you can form them from other brass, but oh man, you know, 303 is the way to go. You know, the ballistics of the 303 shit on the 455.77. Uh, you can buy ammunition for it if you don't want to load it yourself. If you want to load it yourself, you can get brass for it. Even though that is, sorry about this, my next door neighbour's a carpenter and doing some sawing. Um, yeah, I mean, even brass for 303, decent brass. Like I said, um, that celery and bellow brass is junk. And, um, yeah, so I've got some Remington brass, but again, I'm still freaking out about this group. There's just gold 
that is gold that is three rounds through that hole and there's two other rounds I mean that's in each group at 50 meters with this thing that is sweet that is so sweet so anyway just let you know that I've sort of completed it I really would like to get some front wood maybe even make it myself um, yeah which would be a bit of a mission um, yeah so because I don't uh, there's a men's shed in town I don't know what uh, carpentry equipment they've got it'd be nice if they had a router with a round bit that I could route the channel out and then shape the rest of it but eh, maybe um, let's see yeah that's about it um, so I'm gonna have to go to work soon so you probably won't see a, a video from me for a little while maybe uh, I might maybe if I do get the opportunity to go hunting with this in the meantime I'll ring up my buddy and, and say to him hey is there any pigs around and I want to try this out because he'll want to have a shoot of it as well so hopefully the next video you'll see is me actually sh shooting a pig with this or not shooting a pig but having hunted and shot a pig all right all those people don't freak out you know you're not going to see graphic you know death and destruction and mutilation sorry it's just gone a little bit overcast now um yeah but you'll probably see the pig so the, with the stuff that i've got the buttstock the socket uh the socket spring i haven't used it or the retaining thing um the actual socket itself uh i had to get the dremel and uh just grind it out a bit with the dremel to make the hole bigger because the hole was too small you know hammered it in and that ain't going anywhere. I was going to uh, use this, uh, what is it? This is what I use for the site as well, Permatex Steel Weld. It's pretty good stuff. Uh, it's really easy to work with. Um, and uh, I was gonna Permatex it in, but <laughs> I don't think that's going anywhere. So I'll just leave it as it is. Yeah. Um, it's not perfectly flush. Like the angle that they've cut it in is not right or I'll, I'll put the wrong end in or something or other. I'll see if I can rip it out and put it in the right way. Anyway, okay, back again, really quick. I have actually, um, I've actually permatexted it in the socket. Here's what's left over. Oh, that goes off really quick. Um, so, uh, it's, it is hanging out a bit. It's not flush, but I've got it even. I just, I used a, um, Obviously I used this piece of rubber against the wood at the bottom, foam rubber, and then this is almost the exact diameter of, well, a little bit bigger than the actual socket. So I've, I've managed to actually get it even. So that's permatext in, so that's never gonna go anywhere. Uh, it doesn't perfectly line up with the lever, or the lever doesn't perfectly line up with it, but it, it, it goes in, so it's okay. Um, uh, yeah, goes in. Um, so, um, it is poking out a bit, probably about, I don't know, about half a mil. But later on, very, very carefully, I might just um, grind that off. Although I should just leave it because it is nickel plated brass, apparently. Um, so, we'll see how we go. But anyway, I can't wait to take it out and um, actually. Um, employ it as a hunting weapon. I shouldn't be touching this because it's going to rust. So anyway, see you later.